Hello and welcome, long time no see. Today we'll be talking about a tool for analog lovers and not only. If you're into a little bit of more vintage photography or like to, well, maybe dehance your images to enhance them and make them a little bit old school retro vintage, this is the dehancer plugin that we'll be talking about. And for example, what can he do for you? The plugin I mean. You can get this into something like this. Can you see this halo? You can go from here to here or here. Of course, this is over the top, but this is something to show you what can you do. You can also add... Now let's try and make a full edit from beginning to the top only in Dehancer and then eventually some cropping in Affinity Photo. Let's make it a time lapse so it won't be boring and let's see what we'll have in the end. Photos. Here. Of course, this is over the top, but this is something to show you what can you do. You can also add to this a little bit of grain. I hope you can see it. And of course, regular landscapes. I am using and I would use it for portraits for this blooming effect because this is something you can get with old school lens like Helios, Carola Zaysiana, Tessar, and etc. And here I have everything in a single plugin. And pretty much it works for every major software and on iOS. What we are talking about today. Since I was bored for, with photography, didn't have any movie for a long time, I decided to go with the Dehancer because it looks nice. As you can see here, film profiles. A lot, a lot of different film profiles I will show you in a minute. Film grain, this is pretty much not for me, but blooming effect and halation effect. This is something I really like, especially for the old school lens. I mean, I like those movie effects that they... Uh, are able to create old school vintage profiles pretty much like a presets but it's not preset in the meaning like a lookup table this is something a lot more complex so it's not that simple what i like about the documentation it's really detailed like bloom you get everything about bloom and how it how it works bloom emulates the combined effect of light dispersion on the boundaries of contrasting image areas yeah pretty much we know what that does right in the 30 page. Halation is the film emulsion effect visible at the local red-orange halos. So I would say what's the difference? Actually, when we will be using this, there is difference. You will see it. So the main idea, use it for making some retro vintage effect. And like, you can be wondering, why should you use this? You get Photoshop. If you do, great. But this is a lot easier because it has sliders. And I, for example, I like to save my time and make it a lot faster. So I can just click edit on my image, browse, click the profiles and just launch the plugin like that. This is already changed because when you launch the Hanser, it remembers your last settings, which when you want to batch process a couple of images, it's a lot easier because there is no batch processing per se, but you can just open the image edit this in uh, Dehancer, you already have the previous settings, you just click OK and there you have it. As you can see here, a copy of the image was already created in Capture One, so I just click OK and I have the image here. I know you would like to probably select a couple of images and edit all of them, but plugins don't work like that. But let's get back to that image and edit this the proper way. So I can show you the features that the Hanser is providing for you. Let's reset everything here. As you can see right now, those are images without any edits in the Hanser and in Capture One. Let me control R one more time for resetting everything. And here we have just regular image. There is no profile. Now there are profiles enabled. It's pretty much like a Lightroom, Capture One, whatever other uh, software you're using. You either enable something or not. So what I wanted to show you, it's temperature compensation. Calmness to the max. Like, look how awesome it looks in the Hanser. It's actually added 
the warm light of a warm light bulb is added and here it's just red like obviously there is a huge difference i i don't know if you can see that but but i do and i definitely like that a lot more so this is one of the things i won't be going through everything read it in the documentation try for yourself but what i do like is the bloom effect i have the old school lens like carl zeiss and tesser and helios pump everything to the max so it will be visible for you guys here you can set how many highlights you want to have actually in the image then there is the source limiter so how much of the source i want to limit a little bit of glow let's reset this here we have a comparison so you can see that this there is that diffusion they're adding as you can see you can play around with this and in the end why dehancer i think because it's like dehancing your image it's not that pin sharp as you would expect from a 4k tv 60 fps but do you care not really it makes i would say the image is more alive it's more real it's not that fake like pin sharp fake beautiful and of course a lot of films if you are an old school analog shooter you can pick something like that and like you would be done of course it's all up to you you can find that this is more of a less a preset but it's a lot more complex so let's go further this was blooming this is a halation effect let's go with the max and see the differences So this is the halation and it was in the documentation that this is a red orange halo around this is blooming this is the halation effect you could argue it's pretty much the same but still whatever you like you can do let's go further down the road film grain let's add everything to the max okay it's grainy obviously right but we can remove the grain in the highlights for example and in the mid tone and you can see that there is a lot less grain here, a lot less in the background. And of course, reduce the amount in general. And what does it make? No grain added in the foreground for, for example, highlights will make the image a lot sharper in those parts in the front that you would like to have sharp. In general, you would use a blur filter on the image, then overlay this and brush it in Photoshop. So some of the parts will be a lot more blurry in the background, but the for foreground will be a lot sharper so it will look better here with this uh, grain adding for the shadows it does it a lot more subtly which i would say looks a little bit better especially if you like to play with portraits like that or landscapes or anything in general so this is film grain you can add this midtones highlights shadows great stuff i didn't know i don't know right now any other software that can do those effects i think blooming is maybe in luminar but luminar sucks for me anyway so i wouldn't go there you got the film compression as you can read here to emulate the film like compressed tonal range we invented the film compression tool it lets you fine tune the redistribution of the highlights pretty much you got the tonal range right how wide is your exposure and the image because we all know nikons are the best they have the most exposure range than the sensor can capture but old school analog cameras had it a lot less a lot narrower than wider so this is the tool for that and from developer it's pretty much simple right gamma correction contrast boost saturation but as you can see saturation is also very warm it works according to the profile of the film you specified like for example here the saturation is different between different kind of movies so it really does work with the profile of the film you're picking and of course you can argue this is a preset etc etc you can use it yes you can but still this for analog lovers and just those vintage looks that obviously have a well written uh, history of working well for the industry you can pick it up let's try and see how it works with a landscape yeah the color balance looks like can you see how the color balance looks here like how 
nicely warm it is instead of just being plain red like I tried but I cannot really get the same color balance in affinity this is too green this is obviously too red like something is no yes but here great stuff also the dehancer has the print tool and this is pretty much for printing, obviously, but the color profiles for the paper and for the printer, this is like a totally different subject. Here you get a couple of profiles, so this is something for you, but in the end I would always go with the color profiling on a printer for the particular color space, like if you really need this, if not, you don't really need to care. The standard vignette, this pretty much is always, you can just... Set up the proper aspect ratio for a vignette and everything is the same as in any other software we are using. One of the best things I think you can do with this is those color profiles give you that vintage retro look like in a book from like 70s, 80s or 90s where you grab those images and you see those printed images, they are not sharp, the color is all over the place, there is this blooming effect, halation effect. The colors are a little bit different, maybe I have a little bit of nostalgic approach to that. Someone asked me why plugins have the same tools than the regular software. Why do we need this here? Because we already have it like here in Capture One for example, right? So why would I use this here and here? The problem is that if you are using this or changing any film or in any plugin using any preset, there is a lot easier to change this here because this is a different software instead of here because then I would have to go back to Affinity, uh, Capture One, sorry, change something, then launch the plugin again and see what effect do I have in, in finally. And here I have everything in one place, so in the plugin and change the most important things for me right here instead of using this software here because why do you use a plugin? Because it gives you something that the original stuff doesn't have. If you have Affinity, you are using Nikon Collection or Dehancer or whatever else it is, you still usually exposure composition, you can do this here. If the image is okay from the start, you won't use it anyway, because you are using, for example, I will use Dehancer for film grain, halation, blooming, and that's it. Because vignette, I will do this later on in Capture One. That's the bottom line, you don't really need everything of those, but still it's nice to have those because sometimes it is useful. That's it. As you can see, this is totally done only in Dehancer. Pretty much maybe some things additionally I could do in Affinity, but the point is to have this a little bit blurry, a little bit of blooming image, but just to make it a lot real and a lot more fancy, fine arty, whatever you want to call it. So this is the Dehancer plugin, if you want to know more, in addition, in the description, you can find links, you can also buy it, there is Black Friday in a couple of days, think about that, and that's it. Thanks for tuning in, and bye for now.